So good morning, everyone. Welcome once again to our weekly webinar, Lessons in the Lockdown. Delighted you could join us uh, for this 30-minute sort of brief overview and uh, interview of a, of a special guest most weeks. So you can see from the screen there, I've been joined by uh, Tatiana Atlan, and uh, we'll hear from you just in a few moments. Uh, Tatiana, great to have you with us. Great being here, guys. Thank you for having me. So before we get into our um, topic for today, uh, just a, a, a brief market overview for you that we normally do. Uh, we haven't actually done this, John, for, for a few weeks. Um, so uh, again, there's always a discussion of even how beneficial is it, but in terms of where the market is saying right now, uh, I pulled up Savile's report, and mm -hmm. there's just some of the, the high-end stuff, and I suppose it's some positivity, but then the last line probably is the key one. So. Um, House price rose 0.9% in September, 12-year high in mortgage approvals in August, but 2021, they're predicting zero growth potentially. So what's your what's your sense of where we are now? So the market is reacting to a number of variables, pent-up demand, people choosing to take action in their lives because they now have a, a different perspective and the stamp duty changes. So we have a lot of temporary noise, um, which is causing this uplift, and we might get some temporary noise pushing prices down right after the stamp duty holiday ends. Uh, I think the bigger thing is the demographics. Uh, employment is obviously something you have to look at in the types of employment. You also have to look at the fact that, to be very blunt, the virus has not killed that many people, so we still have shortage of housing, we still have demand for housing, but we also have a change in how people view housing. Now home office becomes much higher priority. So you, we don't have a new model yet for what people are gonna think and look for in housing. And once the vaccine kicks in in the spring and the summer, we may see people say like, I like being in the city, or we may say people saying, no, no, I do like the extra space further out with the extra room. So it's really hard to say. Yeah. And whoever is moving the cursor, it's keeping flashing the advanced. So thank you. Okay. Job. So in, in terms of obviously trying to keep our finger on the pulse, I think the one message we've been given out over this last number of months is that for those involved in property, uh, what's very important is that you, well, I suppose one, have a clear strategy, but two, be prepared to change that strategy if the, the market changes and the economics around your existing strategy changes. So uh, again, any sort of comments on that, John? What do you find? You do a lot of consultancy. You run a, a monthly uh, network event where public professionals come together to discuss strategy. So what do you find that people are talking most about this topic of strategy? Well, I, I actually presented last night to a large group and one of the hosts um, was saying that it's been a time to reset and think. Um, so some people are changing strategies because they're realizing that they chose poorly in the past or they're heavily into holiday essay type uh, business. So service accommodation business, which is holiday dominated and they're not in necessarily a staycation location, their city center or something. So they are possibly changing. Other people have moved more from student housing into maybe key worker housing if the uni local university is not having students on campus. But again, the fundamentals are mostly the same. Uh, I do think there's a shift though, where people are now much more aware of how much space do I have in the home? Can I segregate the children, the pets, the adults, and maybe work and live in the same place? And that's causing a bit of a rethink and some people are moving for more space. I, I just rented a property where that's exactly what the tenant's doing. They're only moving one building, but they're moving because they want more space. Yeah. Well, that, that's an interesting, um, an interesting comment. That takes us in, obviously, to our, our uh, topic this week. Um, so before we dive into our, our special guest and get into this week's topic, um, let me remind everyone that we don't use the, the chat box. Um, we prefer to use the Q&A box. So if you have any comments, if you have uh, some observations, or you have any questions for, for Tatiana, um, put them into the Q&A and then um, you know, Asher can, can look at those and uh, then prompt uh, John and I to, to deal with those questions. So um, always keen to have interaction, always keen to have feedback uh, from people. Uh, there's no right and wrong very often in the topics we discuss. People have different opinions based on their own experiences. 
Um, and part of this webinar is about bringing those different experiences sort of um, into one session so people can learn, understand, and obviously make decisions that suit them. So uh, delighted today to have uh, our special guest, uh, Tatiana Atalan. And uh, you can see there, she's the founder of uh, Atalan Homes, uh, property developer, mother, wife, and I'm sure uh, you have a, a busy schedule day by day. So Tatiana, thanks for joining us. Do you want to just introduce yourself and just explain your background and what you do in property? Um, hi, everybody. Um, and thank you for having me here. It's, it's a pleasure. Um, so I'm Tatiana Atalon and uh, I came to where I am now. Um, my, 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 my background is in finance and um, it's been, the property development has always been something that um, in the back of my mind, somewhere that I would like to be um, in, in. And probably from 18 years old, when I had a second job as a, as a teacher in a kindergarten, kids actually were the first time who prompted me to be in a development. Why? Because they learned me, they taught me so much. So I thought, what can I give back? And for me, it was, it would be amazing if I could give them a beautiful building that is um, architecturally designed for, to develop curiosity in kids and uh, be sort of, um, or, you know, uh, all those things basically. So here I am now, and this is something that I still want to do. But yeah, in the meantime, we are uh, doing now um, new contemporary development, the new build, and uh, it's coming close to um, getting into development stage, which is very, very exciting. <laughs> and we, we're definitely yeah. going to talk about it more. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. So, you're, so just to be clear for the uh, attendees in terms of your strategy, you very much look to source niche property off market. Uh, you very much um, have a philosophy of sort of high end uh, and you seek to add value uh, mainly through design and quality. Um, and therefore it's a very sort of small niche, but, but you bring an expertise. And uh, tell us just a little bit about your team as well that, that work with you on your projects. Yes, so basically um, how it all has started, it was as, as a hobby doing refurbs and um, 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 redevelopments. But when I started doing it as a business, um, I have noticed that I was quite good in um, getting um, property deals that off market, dealing um, directly with vendors and having great relationships. So that way, I, I, it, it becoming like one after another and after another and I just thought this is something that actually that works um, for me and um, being a um, big admirer of architecture design um, this is something that gives me the opportunity of um, getting the land and develop the property that I feel that is appropriate in in the neighborhood and as well as have a um, impact of lifestyle lifestyle for people so um, my team also is um, diverse in, in a way that my husband in construction, so, and communication, me and um, his name is Serge, uh, is whatever I ask, he can see my vision, so he can um, make it into reality. And that way it becomes, so this is, this is, this is what it, because most of the designers or architects, it's difficult to com communicate with um, those who, um, construct it, build it. And uh, so that was a major point for me to think of actually getting this um, to the stage where it's gonna be business, well-established business, as well as my team of Lubome and um, Anastasia. Uh, they are incredibly talented in a way that whenever we take on any box, we transfer, transform it into um, a beautiful building and with a high end quality as well yeah I, I love the fact i love the fact tatiana that you bring passion to your property development it's not just a house that you you, you do up and, and sell you, you you're bringing a vision you're bringing a, a personal creativity a, a passion to the project and i think that really shines out when, when people meet you and people interact with you and i think that's that's cool when it comes to to, to property development I think mainly it comes also um, of uh, having a, a, a educational background in um, a psychology. I understand how much space and your everyday habitat influence you as a person. It um, 
it, 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 you know, you've got your standards uh, basically on that you have your standards on that you have, you have everything you have. Yes. So it, it's a big impact psychologically. And for me, as a person experience, being experienced, living in a cardboard box and how it makes you feel and be in a, a building where it's four and a half meters or um, ceilings high and, and, and having an architecture and everything else. It's incredible how much it impacts on us and, and, and our development. Yeah, I think that's, that's perfect. So, okay, so let's, let's get into the topic today. So again, looking forward to this one today because it's so relevant. Um, and, and, and this conversation has, has been had in, in many households across the UK at the minute. And uh, I will, I've got um, Asher, thank you, done a bit of research for us. And Asher fired up a slide here with was um, just the Times, Right Move, Savills, you know, The Guardian, and, and more and more discussions are happening around this, the impact that COVID is having on people's um, decisions on, on whether they stay where they are or perhaps move house. Uh, particularly around the area you've just talked about, having more space, you know, for a family perhaps working from home, uh, having a space to exercise, and just the whole sort of ambience of existence. Is, is it is it in a small apartment in the centre of a city, or, or is there now more of a move to people saying, you know what, um, I want to be a, a bit more in the countryside. So as lockdowns happen, perhaps have more choices. Um, so I'm going to let uh, John kick, kick off. Um, we put up just sort of five points. I know this is something that, that John's got some views on about why people live in cities. So, John, I'll let you sort of kick it off and we'll get a bit of a conversation. And uh, you and Tatiana, and I'll jump in as required. Uh, I'm going to personalize it slightly. So my son was saying he's a, a resident of New York City. He works in finance. And he was saying a number of his friends have concluded that there's less reason or less incentive to live in the city. He really likes the city. He's not moving anytime soon, but he's noticed that uh, a number of his friends have moved further out. And you could argue that sort of the the nesting reaction that as they go from being single to being couples and then maybe getting married or whatever they do, and then maybe thinking about family that they move out of the city. And historically in my age group, you would tend to move back into the city for the go to shows and plays and all the other nightlife, but restaurant type stuff, not just clubbing, which is a younger thing. So there's this funny demographic uh, shift that goes, it expands and contracts and the type of entertainment. Well, what is COVID doing? And uh, I know Tatiana has a point about this. So what are your expectations or what are you seeing? Because you're very much commutable um, from where you are, which is almost, well, suburban countryside, whatever. Yes, uh, so where, where um, we are, we are, we really are blessed with um, what we have and what we have is diversity. Diversity, what I mean is, we have a rural, rural life of enjoying the countryside, parks, farms, going, doing some, um, I don't know, cherry picking or stuff like that. So um, then we have a seaside that was in the reach as well and airports and London is just literally takes you 15 minutes and you're in Stratford. Um, M25 takes you anywhere in the country that you, you want to be. So it, it's kind of, it's got also a nightlife and it's got restaurants. So it's a diversity of things and having that space, that um, ability of not, of actually feeling yourself free in, in any, in whether you're working or you're in insulation, because there's so much space to enjoy and discover. And um, it really did feel for us as a family, we realized that it was, that lockdown was a holiday. I, I don't know, it yeah, sounds and like horrible. The, so Tatiana it, and I have known each other for a little while back. I think technically you were single at the time, I'm not sure, but I know you didn't have a child and now you have approximately a six year old or whatever. Uh, so there's definitely this idea that, you know, children like to have a bit of space and parents might need to work like we're doing right now. Um, and is the, the home set up to make that uh, easy? And one of the things that uh, I've noticed is, you know, I tend to use this virtual background, which involves lighting and green screen and all this other stuff. So it certainly takes over part of the what used to be living space and 
in, in a different property, I have a, what I call the USA studio, where I can have a permanent setup that's outside of the living space, it's in the basement. And I think people are more sensitive to that now and they're looking for more of that. Um, so we're, we're redefining what quality of life means and like the photo shows sitting on the toilet while you're working, uh, hoping that people don't notice the towel hanging on the hook and behind. Um, this homes, if you go back 200 years ago, we used to live and work in the same place before industrial revolution uh, 300 years ago. And the, we're redefining that now and there's an opportunity to be a little forward thinking about well, what does that mean for families? What does that mean for people? And who are gonna be interested in Tatiana's sort of almost an example of the optimal where very good service into London for those that need to get into London, but very nice style of life for those that wanna feel like they're not in the city. So should we go to the next slide? David, you're on mute. Yes, just a couple more points on, on this. Um, th this is the, the, you know, the main slide for the, the topic. Um, okay. Someone just asked a question there regarding, is there a potential, Tatiana, do you think that this could just be a temporary shift, i.e. this move to the country, and if we get a vaccine, everything settles down in a year or two, will the train maybe reverse again and people start to move back to the city? What's, what's your thoughts on that? I think this is a great question. And I actually thought about it. And... Uh, my personal opinion is because, like, let's say we rewind a little bit back a um, century ago or a decade ago, uh, we had a social boom, right? And um, what happened was people were uh, tend to have, the, there was a trend of everyone being social, so i.e. going out and spending time with outside with friends, pubs and restaurants, etc. It's become part of the people's um almost a habit. So they had to be uh, placed near the work where they can work and play at the same time. Whereas now COVID, in my opinion, because it didn't take us two or three weeks as it was supposed to start from, um, it got to the point where we were like three or four months and now we're going back again. And it's still kind of, we've got so many restrictions that um, during that time, you have the time to develop a habit. And then once from the habit, it goes as your lifestyle. And lots of people that I also heard and spoke with and had a feedback on that actually made them realize that there wasn't the life, what was the life, what was actually really life is about. It's about spending time reconnecting with close ones, spending quality time being outside and, and doing other things as well as of course great if you you know if you work and you can work from home so my opinion is because of all that the length of time and it's still gonna go and the people's perception of the new trend is becoming new trend mm -hmm. and the new trend is actually like lots of people um, they're requesting um, can we change our kitchen into um, like a bar or restaurant type of feeling? Or can we change our living room into the night cl cl club type of things because they want to do disco in there? So their home eventually like becomes their um, social sort of how they, you know, where they want to be and what what's clicks their boxes. Or yeah. if you want, to, yes, uh, uh, somebody becomes library of, or things or, or gadgets that they, they whatever they you know work with. So it's my, it's fair, the fair to say in terms of that quality of life that really, really what we're saying is well, first of all, people will always still want to live in a city. I don't think we're we're saying for one moment people will all live in a city, but I think the more space people have, the more choices they have about yes. their lifestyle and the quality of life. So um, you know, for sure some are going to be happy in the city, but as people maybe realize and experience even if it's only for a year or two, um, experience the quality of life that can be had if you can commute from your work by fast infrastructure, you know, be that rail or roads, um, but then you have more space and more room and, and, and all of that. Um, yeah, but it'll be interesting to see how that how that pans out. So, so any, um, I, I, Asher, you're, you're a quick uh, comment. I do, yeah. have, yeah, I do have something to add to that. I do have something to add to that as well, which is um, I think really importantly, aside from um, people's attitudes to how they feel about going out and how much they need the city life, I think on top of all of that, 
um, I think after this is going to have a huge impact on how people work. Um, working from home is going to be a much more normal thing after all of this. You know, even after it blows over, I think there's that realization that a lot of people had that I can actually do this from home. Um, you know, obviously my office originally didn't want me to, but now that it's a necessity, I'm set up here. I have my home, you know, I have my whole home office um, and a lot of people have found that they're actually a lot more comfortable um, working from home. You know, it, it, it saves them a lot of money on travel and food and that, you know, all those random things that you end up buying on your way to work that just don't have any value. Um, and I feel like once, you know, after this, you know, past seven, eight months, people have looked at their budgets and realized that they've saved money in so many ways. Um, why wouldn't they request at least um, from their work, hey, I would like to actually work from home, even though it's not a necessity. Um, and if that's something that's, um, you know, that actually does go ahead as a, as a regular thing, so many people will have uh, less reason to live in the city except for socializing. So, um, you know, we might find that a lot more people will move to places kind of like Hertfordshire or Essex, where it's near enough the city that, you, you know, it's within an hour, but at the same time, when you look around you, you're in, you know, the lovely countryside. Absolutely. Exactly. And I think this, you know, you form a habit for 30 whatever days that it becomes embedded, as Tatiana was saying. And I think Ash has made a great point that we now can be more global citizens. We can be more locally distanced and at the same time still be productive. And we will come together for that, that business or social reason that together it matters. But we won't necessarily default to everybody must commute in, everybody must cram into cars and trains or whatever, and everybody must go home at the same time. It'll be more like university life where you have your stuff you got to get done and whether you go to the lecture or not, whether you show up at other things or not, but you need to hit your deadlines. Yeah, very much so. Okay. No, very, very good. Thanks, Sam. For us, I was going to bring you in there. You're maybe a slightly different generation than uh, myself and John, so it was good to hear things from uh, from your perspective. Oh, All the helpful. Um, so, um, so just then, as we sort of come to the end of this morning's webinar, I think it was really useful just to, to hear some different thoughts about so what is very much a hot topic, um, and this is something that people here are looking to buy, people are looking to sell, developers, estate agents are, are, are wrestling with and trying to, to get ahead of the trend of, of what's going to happen with this, people looking to move you know, out of cities just to the outskirts. Um, fortunately for yourself, Tatiana, this has been your strategy anyway, uh, and for a number of years, and, and what's happened more recently is perhaps just brought your strategy into focus, um, uh, and therefore the timing for your projects is probably arguably sort of better now than, than perhaps at other times in the past. So um, you are um, preparing a project for our platform. So full, full disclosure for the attendees. And uh, this is uh, Oak Gardens in Shenfield. Um, now this isn't open live for investment yet. So there's very limited things we can actually say about it uh, on, on the call here today. Um, but we can indicate that it's a, it's a high-end development. It's in uh, Shenfield. Um, and this really, Tatiana, text the boxes that you've talked about, large rooms, garden, countryside. Do you want to just um, not go into any of the financials, but just maybe explain briefly where it is and why you chose this particular uh, project? Um, Oak Gardens project is pretty, it is really is unique um, to us and unique in so many ways because of its diversity, its positioning. So how close it is to the station, how... Um, close it is to M25, how close to this town, to airport, seaside. So it's got like this 360. And this plot of land is um, fantastic the way that we want to put that uniqueness into this building, into it architecture and uh, design driven as well. So, um, um, <laughs> I can't say much, right? But um, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's we, okay. are so, we are so excited to be um, working on this. Um, development will be starting early next year. And um, it's something close to a, a contemporary state of the art, architecture driven. The concept is of staycation, perfect for staycation, having large garden, great space and glass probably would be uh, predominantly as well to get 
outdoors with it to indoors. Mm -hmm. so, so this is the, it's not staycation like holiday home, it's staycation as in you don't wanna go on a holiday because you're so happy at home and, and you're easy to commute into London if that's what you're required to do, easy to just work from home because you got the space to spread out. And if you're a creative or someone who needs to be able to like be quite sort of open to new ideas, you can see outside and inside and the kids can run around and all the rest of it. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah. I mean, I, I was sort of smiling to myself because uh, Tatiana was trying to choose uh, her words very carefully there. Um, that's because of sort of a, a, quite a, um, a warning regarding com uh, compliance and thoughts of promotions. We're just making sure we don't uh, cross over that line. So thank you uh, for being circumspect, uh, Tatiana, on that. Um, so just to be clear, we are still in what we call the onboarding of this project. It hasn't been um, finalized yet as a financial promotion. Um, and as part of that, uh, recently, um, Asher, you can see, who's our um, marketing uh, on, online person and who obviously works with our fundraisers and preparing the promotional side, uh, along with Avina, who is our investment analyst. Um, they recently actually went and um, looked at the site with Tatiana as part of our due diligence. And um, Asher, do you want to just sort of briefly, how did you find the visit? What did you like about the site? And uh, you're obviously preparing a promotion for Tatiana's uh, project coming up. Sure. Um, no, the, the site was amazing. Um, <clears throat> It was really, I think the thing that most, the thing that impressed me the most was how easy it was to get there. I mean, I, I live in Camden, it's, it's pretty much, you know, it's, it's zone two, I'm, I'm very close to central London. Um, I was there within 40 minutes, less even, um, and it took two trains. Um, but actually getting to the site itself, um, it was, you know, beautiful countryside, um, you know, you don't have too many people living around you you know I'm again I'm from London so I'm very used to having back-to-back -back houses and um, you know being able to see your four neighbors doing their doing their washing up and their cooking so it's it's really great to you know check out the space not only to see actually how surprisingly vast the site itself is um, because it, you know it will make for a really really nice really really nice space and a, a really wonderful home um, and it was just incredible to, um, you know, see that firsthand as well. It was also um, amazing meeting Tatiana and just genuinely seeing her vision on what she wants to put out and the, the reasons behind everything. And I think, um, you know, it was, it was really impressive all around, basically. Okay, th thanks. Thanks for that. It was good to, um, good, good to be on site there. So um, as you can see, we're can sort of finishing off the on onboarding um, and the project will be view deal. Uh, possibly today, but you can watch out for that on our platform. You can access the offer document um, and be able to look at all the information um, that, that's provided. Uh, someone asked a question in the Q&A there. Uh, Tatiana, have you done this before? Um, part of the offer document shows a number of projects that you have been involved in and done. Um, we are sort of about a minute and a half, two minutes away from the close, but maybe just in 30 seconds, just explain some of the, you know, projects you've done and, and, and how many have you been involved in just to give the attendees an example uh, yes because um well i've done lots of uh, projects that were diverse in a way that it was refurbishment it was um complete restructuring relaying and um i've been in, in, in involved in a project that is a new build from the ground up and my team as well, they have a wealth of experience, um, lots of years, let's say my husband construction, 20 years of everything else. So we've seen, we, we, I've been through enough project that I feel that I'm confident where I am now. And this is something that, um, yes, gonna be amazing. So guys, yeah, no, welcome yeah. on board. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's grand. Say people can, can get the offer document when it's there and they can look at some of the things you've done and obviously ask questions. So um, one really good way of people having a look at you and some of your case studies is a project webinar. And we have one of these planned for Thursday, the 3rd of December uh, at 7 p.m. It'll take about 45 minutes, 50 minutes. Um, and that will allow us to, number one, see more about you and your background and, and some of the things you've done and also look at this particular project. So people can, can quickly screenshot uh, this slide or take your 
phone out and, and take a quick image of it. And there's the bit.ly link. And that is now open where you can go and register and uh, you can then get yourself uh, on that. Um, so the, yeah. David, the prior case study is actually already up on the crowdfunding site, right? That's a very, very good point, John. Thank you for reminding me of that. So um, you can actually go to our homepage and there is uh, one of, uh, in fact, the case study we just mentioned, you actually can deep dive into that, see the all the financials, see the images, the before and afters, uh, and that will give you a, a very good example of the, uh, the experience. You also can do what we call recorded interest, um, either on the case study, um, but certainly when uh, this project goes to view deal. So if this is something that you like and it may interest you and you happen to be an investor uh, on the webinar, then you can actually um, leave a, an email address, uh, an amount that you may be interested in investing, um, and that allows us uh, to provide information and, and sort of uh, nurture you through to making a decision if this is uh, for you or not. That's, that's helpful to Tatiana uh, and the team um, if uh, you kind of record your interest, if that's something you're, you're interested in. So just checking the questions here before we close. Um, this is just one home, how big... Uh, there's a, probably a story behind it. There is scope on this site for further development, but we'll leave that to the project webinar. Um, how do you register? Do we that? know how big the home is when it comes to bedrooms and things? So uh, the home, uh, the square footage is uh, probably about two to to ten, to 10 to 20 square meters. And uh, the site is, yeah. How many bedrooms are designed? So we would have, uh, we're planning for four ensuite bedrooms, quite spacious, and uh, open plan living uh, with right. a kitchen and diner and then living room that goes into outside into just glass and having kind of a water feature like, or it can be a swimming pool as well, so. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's uh, be great to go into those details uh, on the project webinar uh, next, uh, next Thursday on that. Okay, so just to wrap up then, um, again, people know that if they want to speak to John or myself uh, regarding property consultancy, uh, then feel free to, to reach out to us. We're happy to have those, uh, those conversations. And uh, I think that is everything that we have for today. So uh, thank you very much, Tatiana, for joining us. Really appreciate that. It's uh, good, to, good to have you on and uh, to John and uh, Asher for his input as well. So I'll let everyone say their quick goodbyes then before we uh, finish off. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone. See you in a week. All right. All the best, everyone. <laughs> and, uh, of course, current climate, have a really successful week. And above all, stay safe.